going to use my yeah. little tool here so I can uh, yeah. get my pictures at the same time. Okay, looky, looky here. Mm -hmm. Our acceleration goes from its constant right at that point right there. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But what direction is the ball still going? Where? Still going up. When the velocity down. is here, it's still going down. Yeah, in fact, it doesn't reach its furthest point until it's clear there. Right where the velocity is here. Notice, what does it mean when all of a sudden it's acceleration goes from constant? What's happening? Yeah. Well, that's the ball where the ball hits the what? There's compression. Oh, so is the particle model going to work? No. Mm. Oh, you got to turn it back. That's squishy particle model. That's squishy. What way can you use to model it then? It's kind of straight. It's trying to be straight. It's pretty much <laughs> because the ball's like, yeah, kind of wobbling. Well, it's just, and just, kind of, just, but where does it? Where did, according to the acceleration, where does the acceleration change? Where would I move this to show where the first acceleration change? Right down, right. Yeah. Right about there. Yeah, when it about, makes this over, little bit steep slope down. Which direction is the ball still going? Still going. That's the point where it's like changing. What they said. So plate type thing. Like this. I mean, we got the same, our ball was the same as yours. The spring right. with two particles on each side, or one on each side. And uh, we modeled the ground as a rectangle type thing with particles inside. Each one of those particles can freely move. And uh, Basically, we modeled, we, are, we already knew the motion of the um, ball. So we modeled uh, what's happening inside the ball and why it's doing what it's doing. And in doing that, we got our motion slash energy map. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, but basically, at the top, you have what's called uh, energy interacting, and that's energy that is brought by gravity, or the interaction between the ball and the earth. And uh, as it moves down, you gradually move to kinetic energy, which is uh, energy of movement. And uh, halfway down, you're going to have half EI and half EK. And EI is energy interacting, and EK is energy kinetic. Um, as you get closer down, you get uh, closer and closer and closer uh, to all EK, which is kinetic energy. And right before it hits the ground, you have um, basically all EK, and just a very, very, very small amount of interacting. Then when it hits the ground, like they said, it compresses. And you have a new form of energy, which we call, where is it? energy internal, okay? And um, 
that is energy. He doesn't want me to use this word, but it's like. Don't use it then. It's it's the it's energy that's absorbed by the ground moved, and the ball. It's displaced energy, reacting energy at the, its most compression point, and transfers back over to kinetic energy again. But I think every time you hit the ground, your internal energy is going to get bigger. You're right. And then finally, the, it'll just be all internal energy because so, it's going to stop bouncing. Right. And then as you go back up, the internal energy uh, gets uh, more and more as the kinetic energy gets less and less. And it repeats until eventually the internal energy encompasses the entire charge. Okay, maybe it's just me, but that's a whole lot more confusing than just a ball bouncing. Yeah. Well, just, just like if you have a ball just sitting there, it's not interacting, <clears throat> but if you like hold it up, then that's interacting because right. you're you're doing the work, you know? So, there's, you can actually interact. If you just drop off, like, the ball, it can just start hitting, and that's an interaction, and you're putting the work. Yeah. Does well, that make sense? When, when it's sitting on the, on the ground, wouldn't there still be interacting, though? Because basically the ground is Not if there's not an outside. The, the ground is holding it up, though. I don't yeah. want to say force, but not yeah. if there's not an outside person or whatever, energy. So wait, I, wait, what are you saying? I was just, it I would still picture that as interacting. The yeah, like yeah. there wouldn't That's be any I mean. mysterious internal because I don't, that doesn't make sense to me. The, the internal, internal energy, energy I think comes from after the bounce. I mean, but there's, there's, I mean, there's some internal energy the second it hits because the particles in the ground start moving. That's right. internal energy. Well, the, the particles are still moving while it's inside, even when you're just holding it still. I mean, there would still be yeah. internal energy there. So you can't yeah. just say that. I, I know the, that the, it, the interactive energy here and then after it's done is going to be the same because you've hit the ground. You've well, moved the particles, so yeah, it's not going to be the same. It, it does go back, but it's. Go ahead. The, the way that your, your model is, you don't show any interacting energy in the ground itself, you show it all in the ball. No. Oh. That's, what That's this why is. they're moving fast. That's why we have arrows, because they're moving now. What is this particle, particle connected by a spring model representing? Oh, right. You said it's representing the ball, so if we have it's representing two particles, like he was saying, the there's still the action there. If you have one particle, there's no action in that particle. It's a single particle. So if it's not moving when it's sitting there, then that's the internal energy. A, where the, you're holding the ball. B, you got the ground. And if you have a ball, whether it's a lead ball or whether it's that ball, there's going to be different amount of internal energy. A lead yeah. ball is going to go, boom, little bounce and stop. So there's different kinds of energy in each ball because our springs are different in each ball. Yes. Okay. Because that's the model we're using. I completely understand. So it's that. not changing the particle; it's changing the model we're using okay, to describe this section. Okay, that's changing the particle. Okay, no, okay. That's not what we're doing. Okay. I didn't say we're changing the model, okay. changing the model of which section of the action we're describing. The first section, like okay. you were saying, we had the first section particle. Floor, then that's the next model would be the spring and the other particle because we have to describe the compression between the two. And then after and that then we can go back to a particle model without changing model. it because in that last section all we're talking about is the movement of the ball going back up and then falling again. Does everybody agree that this guy has, if we're making a better model than we are right now, does this guy have particles in it? Yes. Sir. Are they moving around? Yes. Okay. So we're just pretty much ignoring that. Does everybody agree with that? Is that a fair thing to do? Okay. okay, so then it comes down, what happens on its way down? It builds it's in. More it's more energy. Build energy. Some of that energy changes. It, it transfers. It transfers, okay. I'm, I'm going to kill a word right now that um, I've heard a few times that I didn't step in. There is no forms of energy, okay. There's only one energy, okay. There's only one energy, and it's stored in different places. So it's one form, different ways of storing it. It's like having a dollar bill and a dollar bill versus quarters. The ground, so it has to be in the ball. It's already been it's given to the ball. ball. Once the ball leaves the ground, the ground's not participating until the ball comes back down. So, look at this idea and keep it in mind. Now, you said one other word and you said it in passing. I got two minutes to come back to it. I'm just going to write it on your guys' board here in the middle. And Mangle is out of tape. So this is the last. Okay, system. <laughs>